Hi, and thank you for tuning in. What I'll be talking about now is addressing some of the challenges when optimizing long to train models. My name is Tobias Andreasen. I work for a company named SIGUP. And if you're interested in trying some of these things out, learning more, have questions or comments, please reach me on my email, Tobias at SIGUP.com. So I've tried to put together a bit of an abstract for what I want to talk about now. So ultimately, SIGUP provides an extensive set of advanced features which helps you, the expert, save time while increasing model performance via optimization. In order to do so, we've created a framework that allows you, the expert, to customize the optimization process in order to target your specific problems. So the way that I was thinking about so the way I want to talk about this is I'll start by framing up some, some generic problem that hopefully most can relate to, then, and then talk about how to address various issues related to the problem, whether it's you know, one training times, how to best utilize compute for optimization, and then ultimately talking about how to use previous results, um, and then trying to tie it all together. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get started. So I work for a company named SIGUP, and our vision is to accelerate and amplify the impact of models everywhere. So ultimately, the way we do that is by building tools that allows you to do your, a lot of your work faster. Um, before before I go into the real presentation, I think it makes sense to just get on the same page about what I mean when I say black box optimization or optimization or hyperparameter tuning, because ultimately that's what I'll be talking about. So let's say we have built an API solution that allows you to optimize the parameters of your model. Um, it's not really the aspect I'll be talking about now. Um, but ultimately, hyperparameter optimization Think of what you see on the left as you. You know, you have your data, you have your models, and you have some evaluation framework. On the right, you have um, you have some optimization engine. And ultimately, what you do when you do hyperparameter optimization is say, okay, these are the hyperparameters. This is the uh, this is the ranges of these parameters. And then you you give that to some some optimization engine. Then you ask for a uh, for a configuration of these hyperparameters. You put it into a model. You, uh, you train your model, you test your model, and you return some metric value back to the optimization engine, and you go back and forth in this feedback. You know, ultimately, that's what's going on when you do optimization at highest possible level. So now that we are all on the same page, let's, let's try to frame up some problem. Um, ultimately, within optimization or black box optimization more general like exists a lot of different schools when it comes to to what type of algorithms to use you know obviously you have your, your random search you have your grid search and you have methods that can kind of leverage um, previous observations um, you know you have your your hill climbing approaches you have your um, generic algorithms you have um, Bayesian optimization and and so on and so forth um, our approach to optimization is through the um, through the lens of, of Bayesian optimization, and the reason for and I'll go into the reasons for that in, in a second. But on top of kind of the, the different schools of algorithms, there is also various approaches when it comes to how much that people want to be involved in the optimization process. You know. On one hand, you have the what I call the the hands-off solution. Um, think of that as you know you have you have this model. You you maybe want to optimize your accuracy or some some loss score, and you're simply defining the hyper the hyperparameter space and say, okay, what is the best I can do within this space within some amount of time? You know, that's pretty hands-off the space, just a turnkey solution. On the other end, you have the um, the more hands-on solution where 
you have a lot of information about the problem you're trying uh, you're trying to solve. Maybe you have a lot of some intuition about you know the the metric space. Maybe you have multiple metrics, um, various business constraints tied to those metrics. Maybe you have um, intuitions about the um, the um, sort of the the, the priors related to to the various uh, the various parameters going into into your model. Ultimately, you want to be able to uh, to apply all of this uh, all of this intuition, whether it's in the metric space, the parameter space, to the optimization process with um, with the goal of of getting to good results faster. So. Ultimately, that's kind of the, um, I guess you think of it as the, the spectrum optimization. Maybe you don't want to do anything or you want to do, you know, you, you want to do everything. Um, what I'll be talking about today probably sits somewhere around here. You know, we, we, we assume we have some amount of information about the, uh, the problem. We, we don't have all. Um, but how do we leverage that amount of information to, to ultimately speed up the optimization process? Um, so, excuse me, um, in this particular situation, we are making the following assumptions. It's just, I want to frame something up that we can hopefully relate to. Um, so we want to continue to re-optimize some model at some regular cadence under the assumption that the underlying data is changed slightly before re-optimizing the model. So again, think of that as you have some model, it goes into production, um, you know, you get more and more data, you type this data, and every time you have enough data, you want to re-optimize the model um, to see if you can if you can make it better based on the, the on the new data that you have, or if you can get at least some performance. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of the um, that's, that's kind of the use case where we're working from. Um, and obviously there is a lot of challenges, um, you know, all the way through the pipeline. The ones I want to talk about now sits kind of in the, uh, in the optimization step. Um, so I want to start out to talk about sort of addressing long training times. Uh, then, you know, how do we utilize compute resources most efficiently? And then because we are, you know, re-optimizing the model at some cadence, is there ways in which we can leverage the previous results so that every time we re-optimize the model, things go a little bit faster? So let's start up by talking about how to address long training times. So kind of the issue is that every, you know, I talked about going through this feedback loop. And the issue ultimately becomes that every configuration takes a long time to evaluate. You know, just from people one minute a long time for other people, you know, 24 hours is a long time. But again, if, if every single model in this feedback loop takes a long time to evaluate, we want to make sure that we are as if sorry, if every if every one of these configurations take a long time to evaluate, we want to make the search as efficient as possible in order to evaluate as few of these samples as possible, okay? So this is not about sort of shortening the, the training time itself. It's just what is the most efficient approach to optimization? And at the end of the day, there is multiple um, efficient approaches to um, optimization. The one that uh, that we've chosen is um, spatial optimization, because we tend to believe that this is a very sample efficient approach, which is doing well uh, in the context of things like machine learning, deep learning, where you know at the end of the day, every every evaluation has some costs, you know, with respect to time, but also you know how long you have to run your infrastructure. But let's talk about why this is efficient and why it makes sense to, to use something like Bayesian optimization. Think about this very simple use case. Um, let's say this is your learning rate versus uh, some accuracy score, okay? 
And let's say that you have already gone through this feedback loop five times. So you have these five points representing yellow. Okay. What we do, or what, what you do when you do base optimization is that you want to come up with some statistical model, um, which you re believe represents the world. And then the ultimate goal is to improve that statistical model. Because if you improve the statistical model, <coughs> then the faster you do that, the faster that statistical model will take you to the best point. Okay. So what is then the next point that you should evaluate in order to you know, improve the statistical model the most? And the way you choose the next point within development based optimization is you say, okay, I have my some acquisition function. This acquisition functions can ask various questions ultimately. It's a, you know, you can think of it as where do I know the least? Think of it as asking where do you know the least? Or where is the highest probability of beating the current best thing that I have? Okay. So ultimately, when we do, we run our optimization engine. So we say, okay, we have some points, but depending on if we're just interested in exploring the space or finding the best optimum or somewhere in between, we want to say, okay, in this situation, we say, where do we know the least? And come up with some, some probability of, of us knowing the least. And then we say, okay, this is the next point we want from you. So as you go through the feedback loop, the next point we would give, we would ask to evaluate was, was here because that's when we know the least. Now we have six points and we can do this exercise all over again. And ultimately this would be the next point we would be asking for. Again, the reason why you have multiple different acquisition functions is because you wanna do some trade-off between exploration and exploitation um exploration is where you learn about the entire space and exploitation is is where you kind of zoom in on the peaks and see if you can actually do a little bit better um that's not the focus of this talk if you want to know more send me an email i'm happy to discuss this in more details but ultimately what i wanted to say with this is if every configuration of your hyperparameters takes a long time to train it makes sense to use an optimization technique, which is sample efficient. And something like Bayesian optimization tend to be very sample efficient. Um, so that kind of addresses the, the to some extent addresses the, the, the first of the issues that we have, okay? Now, another reason why Bayesian optimization is, excuse me, um, tend to be really good for, for, for this type of optimization is because oftentimes people tend to have infrastructure, um, meaning you know, maybe you have multiple GPUs or TPUs or you know, whatever you're training a model. But the challenge is also that you know, the training time tends to differ, like the delta between training time for various models is, is tend to be Hi. So one of the issues now when you're trying to, to optimize these models is that sort of the delta in training time for different configuration of hyperparameters are very different. So think of it as, you know, you take three different configurations. You know, the, the, the first one takes maybe five minutes to, to finish. The second one takes an hour and the third one takes three hours. So how do we avoid sort of all of the infrastructure just just waiting for each other um, or waiting for the for the, kind of the slowest one to finish um, and why does it even make sense to run in parallel um, so the solution becomes that we want to leverage asynchronous parallel optimization in order to accommodate the difference in training times um, so here is another example. Um, instead of having five points, we now have three points. Now the question becomes, what, what would the, the sort of the, the next point that we would sample this optimization be? Um, and that ultimately comes down to 
how many resources or how many like, GPUs do we have? Um, so let's say we just have a single GPU. You know, it makes sense to say, where would we, where do you know the least? Because that's where you learn the most. And we'd probably end up with a point here to, to the left. Now, if we had two pieces of infrastructure, you know, we can explore the space even, even faster. Um, or if we had free, you know, we can pretty much cover the entire space. <laughs> if we get these three points, you know, we have a pretty good understanding about what's going on. <laughs> now, let's say we have five pieces, sorry, four pieces of infrastructure. You know, now we, have, now we actually have the luxury of starting to already here zeroing in on some of the peaks to see if we can, if we can find these, you know, incremental gains to see if we can get better results. And so if we have five pieces, we can, we can zero in on, on multiple of these peaks. Now, the important thing to remember is that all of this runs, depending on how you set it up, but it, it runs asynchronous so that, you know, one GPU finishes and the second that this one finishes, it asks for a new suggestion and, and, and you know, start training in your model. Um, give me one second. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind parallel optimization. So, and this is not really to, this is not to address issues um, around, you know, using a lot of compute. This is more, how do we reduce the wall clock time if you want to do these re-optimizations? And kind of the obvious way to, to, to reduce the wall clock time is, is by running in parallel. And the beauty of base optimization is you, you have the ability to, to run in asynchronous parallel. So, so far we have looked at, at two ways in which you can, you can speed up the, uh, the optimization time. One is just be simple efficient. Um, the second one is now we run this in parallel. And the third way in which we can, uh, we can speed up this process is see if there is ways in which we can leverage previous results. So as I mentioned earlier, we assume that we are in a situation where our underlying data is, is, is changing because we get more data, we tag more data, and we, every time we have enough, we want to re-optimize our models to ha constantly have the best model in production. Um, so now the issues become, we don't want to start the optimization process all, all over every time that we want to re-optimize a model. So the solution here now becomes, are there ways in which we can input sort of prior information in the form of probability density functions? Because as, as I mentioned, when I talked about efficient search, you know, we are asking the question, like, where do I know the least? Because that's where we learn the most. That's under the assumption that we don't know anything about sort of like how the space looks. Now, imagine that you actually knew something about, oh, for the past 10 times that I've optimized my model, the learning rate tends to be in some neighborhood here and the number of layers tend to be in, 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 the, in this neighborhood, sort of the same neighborhoods, but Obviously, they're not the same because it wouldn't make sense to optimize, but they're kind of in the same neighborhoods. Now, what you can then do in order to even speed up the optimization process even further is say, okay, I come up with some, some probability density function, which I use as a prior probability um, for the optimization engine itself so that the optimizer knows simply knows where to start because if you if you know kind of the neighborhood which is good to start you can save a lot of time because you you have to to search the space a lot less so you know here we would probably say 
somewhere around on the x axis uh, what is that one point two and on the uh, on, on the y axis or the x one axis you know the best results is somewhere around what is that two roughly if you if you have this intuition based on all the times you do in the past have optimized this model on 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 different sets of data you know you can ultimately encode this into the entire optimization process and get faster results get better sorry get better results faster because ultimately that's what it comes down to time like how how fast can we get to good results so i know that i just went over some of the um some of some of the concepts uh, that was in the interest of time. I'm I'm more than happy to to discuss this in 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 a lot greater details. I just I was just hoping that I could you know get everyone to 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 think a bit differently about optimization and think about if there is ways in which you can speed up your optimization processes to to get to get better results faster. And these are kind of like these are you know free ways to do it uh, and there is a lot of other ways but again i guess as a conclusion one way to to kind of conclude all of these things so shake up ultimately allows you to 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 make all of these decisions um ahead of time when you do optimization. it also allows you to make none of these decisions ahead of time um but or i should say optimization in general um, you know so again what we talk about now is you know one way to address these long training times in the context of optimization is make sure that we are as efficient as possible um, one way to utilize the computer resources is by um, by doing this asynchronous parallel optimization and you know one way to use previous results is is, is encoding them in the form of prior probabilities uh, in the form of yeah, prior probabilities in the form of probability density functions. And again, these are not the only ways to, to speed up the, uh, the optimization process itself. I'm more than happy to, uh, to discuss any of these things in, in greater details. I actually, I, I hope that this will be discussed in greater details, but some, some other ways is, you know, you can think about fresh hope like adding fresh holds to um to your metrics because again if you input so if you think back to to these statistical models that i showed really quickly you can do things like adding level sets in them to say oh i need to be a, like above this in order to to see success like and i that can actually help you um that can help you to speed up the optimization process by saying, oh, I need to be above something in order to do better. Or these level sets can, comes from, can come from, you know, other metrics that tell something about your business requirements. Um, what could that be? That could be uh, if you have some infrastructure requirements saying, oh, I need my accuracy to be, to be this much, but I need my... Um, I, I need the memory consumption to be lower than some some constraint you know there's no point in searching for the best possible accuracy but what you should do is you search on the best best possible accuracy conditioned on some constraint then another way to in which you can um, in which you can speed this process up is, is you know start to transfer the uh, the priors that you learn in one experiment to another experiment instead of you know coming up with these probability density functions, you can actually start to kind of warm start, um, kind of warm start uh, experiments based on previous experiments. And then you can do things like multitask training where you look at different fidelities of, 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 of your model because some fidelities takes a shorter time to train. Can you use that to explore the space and then go into to high fidelity versions or or vice versa um but yeah um i know that i didn't kind of went into any sort of uh, anything super detailed i just wanted to, to to tease up a few ideas about how to 
how to think about optimization in the context of, of these, you know, uh, at the end of the day, machine learning models or machine learning pipelines um, that, that most people are dealing with. Like, how do we, how do we make sure that the time we're spending on optimizing models becomes as low as possible? Um, so yeah, thank you for uh, thank you for listening in. I um, I really really appreciate it. And if you have questions and comments, please read me on um, Tobias at sigup.com. And again, I'm really happy to go into a lot more details or have discussions around how to, how to kind of leverage these things. Um, but until then, thank you so much and have a, uh, have a great day.